Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Code here and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how you can make a gun. Now, the first thing we need to do is insert our gun model, our tool, the thing you will be holding whenever you shoot someone. And I am of course referring to this. So all I've done here is I've actually just taken a free model from the toolbox here. If you can't see this, I'll show you how to add the, uh, the gun yourself if you want to. But this will be available in the description below. And just in case you guys want to know how I made this gun model, I'll actually show you right now. Um, so the first thing you need to do is go to the toolbox. Um, make sure uh, that you can actually view the toolbox. So just go to view toolbox. Just click this. Um, and I just searched up pistol mesh. And I just scroll down and, you know, try to find a mesh which would work for this video. So I just went with this, I think, a slightly darker version of this, but it's the same thing. And then all I did was create a tool, okay? Um, I put the pistol mesh inside the tool, hold this handle. Make, made sure it's not anchored or anything like that, okay? And also made sure that it is not can collide on. Then what I did was simply make sure that there is nothing except the mesh inside of the handle, okay? I just named this gun and tick this right off. That's all I did except a few minor tweaks, okay? So, um... I added a point light object inside of the handle, okay, um, and also added a sound. Now the sound that I'm using here is free, uh, available from the toolbox, so you can just go get that yourself, but, you know, I provided the fully built, um, you know, this entire object right here with everything inside in the description below, so don't hesitate, just go grab the model yourself and insert it into your own game. Now, the second thing we need to do is put this inside of starter pack. Now, what's this you might be asking? Well, the starter pack is pretty much like whenever someone joins your game, if there's something in the starter pack, then it will be cloned into the player's backpack. So let me just demonstrate this to you. Um, so I click play and as you can see, I'm going to spawn in with the gun, okay? That is because it is in starter pack, okay? That's all it is. That's all it does. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to make this gun function is create a local script, okay? So just click on your gun and click on local script. Now, just in case you guys cannot see the insert object tab, just go to model um, right here model and click on insert object so you guys can actually view it okay back to the script um call this gun controller okay um now let's actually code okay so just empty the script and let's get started okay okay so um local player is equal to game dot players dot local player okay so this will get your player object so if your name is covert code um, it will get your covert code player. Okay, so if I click play, um, this is the covert code player right here. Okay, so that's what game.players.local player will get you. Now, um, we also need the player's mouse. So, for mouse is equal to player uh, get mouse. So, you see my cursor here move around. That is what we're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna get information relating to the cursor uh, by using player get mouse. So I'm just getting information about the player's mouse. So that's all that is. Okay, now local tool is equal to script parent. So this is the script, okay? And this is the script's parent. So script dot parent. That's the gun. Okay, so as you can see, it's a tool, and we named it tool. Now. Um, we also want a cooldown, and I'll demonstrate why later on in, in this video. Uh, so, lo like uh, local cooldown is equal to false, uh, and local cooldown time is equal to 0 0.1. Now, this is the amount of time that we're gonna wait in between each cooldown. 
Okay, if you want a slower weapon, then, uh, then um, you know, I would suggest increasing this to 0.5, 1, depending on how slow you want your weapon to be. But for our sake, um, I'll just put it at 0.1 for this tutorial, okay? Um, now, the first thing we need to do is to activate it, connect function, okay? Um, so this will run whenever someone clicks with the tool in their hand. So yeah, this will pretty much run whenever someone clicks with uh, with the tool in their hand. So this will not run if you just click randomly. Okay, so tool.activated um, will run this chunk of code whenever someone clicks with the tool in their hand. By someone, I mean the player. Okay, that's all this will do. Um, now we want to make a function and if you don't know what a function is, I have a great video on um, Functions explaining what functions are when they're used and how to declare them. So if you're confused then just go watch that and come back So let's just call our function shoot. Okay, so we'll function shoot. Um, now this function will run whenever um, someone clicks with the tool in hand Okay, so we're calling the function here, and this is the function code. Okay, so if cooldown is equal to true, then turn. So if the cooldown is activated, we do not want to continue with the rest of the code. Okay, so we're just gonna go back um, and not run any of the code below. But if the fun, I mean, if the cooldown value, I mean variable, is um, false, then we can proceed. Okay. So, um, so we're just gonna make that cooldown is equal to true. So, no, I mean, can't run this function while the function itself is running. If you understand, so we're gonna call this function. It's gonna check if it's true. And if it is, it will not continue the function below, okay? Like the code below. Um, but if the cooldown is false, then we're gonna proceed and we're gonna make it true so that if you click again, um, the code will not run again until the cooldown expires. Okay, so that's what that does. Okay, now we wanna print out shooting, okay? Just to make sure that this works. Let's click play. Um, to the output right here and just click now as you can see I clicked once okay and it said shooting if I click again I'm not sure if you guys can hear my mouse probably not but I'm clicking like crazy um, so if you click again um, it will not print out again because the code here is not running okay so what we need to do is after the code here runs we want to set the cooldown back to false. So cooldown is equal to false. Um, obviously, we want to wait the amount of time that we declared here. So wait, cooldown time. Okay, so this is going to wait 0.1 seconds in between running the function. Okay, cool. Now let's proceed. We want to make this gun have some cool effects. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, Notice how we have a point light here, as I said before. This is just basically a light um, which sort of focuses around the point. That's what a point light is. So I'll show you this, um, but the thing is, it's not enabled. If I click enabled, then the light will turn on. So let me just click play and show you. Um, as you can see, there's a light here. So if I go and find the gun, um, and toggle the enabled property okay so what we, what we what we want to do is just whenever you click it'll do this okay so it'll just shine the light briefly uh we want to make this yellow i'm not sure why it's that right there but um so tool so handle i'll explain what i'm doing here the point light enabled is equal to false so um this is the tool dot handle okay dot point light dot enabled is equal to false 
okay? So we're turning it off every time the function finishes. But this means that we need to turn it on if we want to actually see the light. So what I'm thinking um, to do this is we'll just have another function called pew. Okay, so local function pew. And in this function, I just copy this. Okay, so copy, paste. And we're just going to change this to true. Okay, so now if I click play, it should toggle on the light and switch it back off if I just do that. So yeah, if I click, the light, um, you know, toggles on and off. Let's go back and get this gun um, closer to completion. So we're done here. We don't need to do any other things in the local screen, okay, except one thing we want to send a message to the server okay um to do some ray casting now i'll bring up some things on screen right now about um what ray casting is maybe put on like a video or something i won't put on a video just, just uh like a little diagram okay about what ray casting is and how it's used now Let's just create that signal that we want. So we want to send a signal to the server to raycast. Okay, so don't get confused or intimidated if you don't know what raycasting is. I'm about to show you, okay? So we just want to create a remote event inside of replicated storage, okay? And we'll just call this shoot gun, okay? And then we just need to send the signal. So game.replicated storage, shoot gun, fire server um, and we want to send a few parameters along with the signal okay so mouse.hit.p and tool.handle so all we're sending is a position okay so if my mouse is here it will send the position in 3d space where my mouse is pointing to okay so let me just demonstrate this let's create a part okay make this red uh, change the size Okay, so let me just drag onto this if I use mouse.hit.p and my mouse is here It will return with the uh, the position of where this red uh, block is So let's do that again if I am moving my mouse and I just uh, Run that line of code right about here where my mouse is it will get this information here. That's the position. Okay. Okay, so let me just remove that um and now we need to create a script on the server. So that object, script, normal script this time, not a local script, and call this gun handler. Okay? Delete everything from the script, and now we want to define a few variables. Okay? And if you don't know what variables are, again, I have a video on those. Um, so if you're confused, just go watch that and come back. Okay? So local range is equal to 525, and local damage is equal to 20. Okay, so this is how far our bullets will travel before they spawning, and this is how much damage our bullets will do when they hit something. Okay. Okay, so game dot replicated storage dot I mean yeah dot shoot gun. Yeah, it's called shoot gun. Dot shoot gun but on server event connect function player target location and handle. Okay? So all I did here, um, if you remember, I sent a signal from the client, which is this local script here, um, with these parameters, okay? Um, by the way, tool or handle is just the handle here, okay? Um, and this here is just receiving the signal from the client. This is on the server and it's receiving the signal um, and it's taking these parameters. Okay, so the player parameter, this is the player who sent the signal. So if I shoot a gun, this will be covert code. Okay, now this is the target location. Again, mouse.hit.p, that's the first parameter there. And this is handle, which is this. Okay, so that's um, pretty much how remote events work. Now we need to get into slightly more detail about, you know, how our gun will actually work. Now, first thing we need to do is if player.character 
is equal to nil, then return. So all this is going to do is make sure that your character exists, okay? So that's what that's going to do. If it doesn't exist, if their character doesn't exist, it's going to return. It's not going to run the code below, okay? Um, handle.sound play. So I have a sound in my handle here. Okay, so it's just a typical gunshot sound. Um, so whenever we click using our gun, a sound should now play. Let's test that out. Load. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's a gun sound. So now that works. Now we want to actually create um, a sort of you know, a, like like a beam. So imagine. Uh, let me just get a part here. Okay. Part here. Change the color to yellow. Um. So whenever you shoot the gun, it's gonna have a beam like this from where you shot this. So again, let me just do this. Um. So this is going to be red. That's where you shot it from. So that's the pistol. And this is where it ended up hitting. Okay, so the, um, the black is where it hit. Okay, so this is the ray. Okay, that we're going to be modeling. Okay, the gun, the target, this is the ray. Okay, now get the gun handler strip open yet again and let's create uh, that beam using instance.new so local beam is called instance.new part workspace okay so we're just creating a new part inside of workspace and then assigning it to this variable called called uh, beam now beam dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new new color Okay, so this is the color that we want. We'll obviously change this to any color we want, really. But I'm going with new yellow because I think that's the ideal color. Okay, so let me just delete this. Um, beam dot form factor. We need to custom. Now, this isn't any, like, it's not too important. It's just uh, to make sure that you can resize your your part to any sort of dimension that you want. So if you want to actually leave that out, okay, but I won't, I'm just including that just to be um, you know, safe. Uh, next thing is we want to change up the transparency. So beam.transparency is equal to 0 0.25. This is how transparent the beam will be naturally. Um, and now we want to change up the material of the beam. So beam.material is equal to neon. Okay, uh, again, let me just undo that, eat and delete. So all we did now is change this to 0.25 and made that neon. Okay, so this is what our beam looks like so far. Okay, so let's go to gun handler yet again. Beam dot anchored as you go through, so it won't just fall out of the world. We want it to be anchored. Um, and beam can collide is equal to false so players cannot just jump onto your beam and like you know just walk on it you know they cannot do that so that's why can collide is equal to false now this is where we get into some maths like, no god no god please no 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 now i'm gonna put some like diagrams on the screen now do not have to understand these ideally yes you would understand you know what they're doing and what well, well um what we're doing here but uh if you don't understand that's perfectly normal um just follow along with the code and the maths will come to you eventually oh so local distance you can handle handle the position minus target location dot magnitude so if you know what Pythagoras theorem is, that's what we're doing now. If you do not know what that is, just don't worry about this. Just copy these few lines of code, okay? We need this uh, portion of mass here just to make sure that we position the beam correctly, okay? So beam.size is equal to vector3.new 
Now, this is going to be the thickness of the beam. So I'm going to make this 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and distance. So it's going to be 0 0.1 thick on the x-axis, 0 0.1, my bad, not thick. Um, 0 0.1, this is the size of the beam. So it's going to be 0 0.1 on the x-axis, 0 0.1 on the y-axis, and whatever distance is on the um, on the z-axis, okay? Combined information about position and rotation, okay? If you don't know what that is, it's kind of advanced, it's okay. Just think of it as a sort of book which you open and it tells you everything you need to know about a part's position and a part's rotation, okay? And we're just gonna be modifying that to make sure it fits within our, you know, our requirements. Okay, um, so it's going to be handle.position, target location, I'll show you why in a second, so if they're not new, 0, 0, minus distance on true. Okay, so what we're doing here is, if you put two positions inside of a C-frame, it's going to make position A face position, I mean, uh, position B, okay? So... Yeah, that's what that does pretty much. And then you're just adding additional C-frame, okay, to the Z-axis. So we're just moving it half of the distance in the Z-axis, but then you're adding a subtraction in front of the distance, which just makes it, so instead of moving to the right, you're moving to the left, okay? Um, so this is math. Okay, so if you don't know what that is, it's okay. It's okay, don't feel bad. Um, you'll eventually get the hang of it, but you do need some form of math mathematical knowledge when it comes to like, programming. Why are you crying? Um, but just starting out, that's fine. If you really want to push yourself, then learn about C-frames and learn about Pythagoras theorem, okay? Okay, so after a bit, we also just want to, um, we don't want this, like, let me just show you what I mean here. If I click play and I click anywhere, the beam is going to spawn just fine. Okay, it should spawn just fine. Let me just check. Okay, as you can see, there's a beam here which just spawned from my pistol or where my pistol was to my target. So if I click again here, beam spawned where we said where we predicted it would spawn. Only issue is that the beams are not being destroyed. We do not want the beams staying around for a long time. So what we need to do is beam, I mean game.debris, uh, add item, beam 0 0.1. So the debris service is, like if you add an item to the debris service, it will be removed after this many seconds. Okay, so we're just deleting the beam after 0 0.1 seconds. That's pretty much it. So this is destroyed. Okay. So this is ray casting right here. So this is ray casting. Okay. Again, this involves some mats. Okay. Uh, again, you do not need to know what's going on. This is slightly... I think this is slightly more advanced than what we did here. So if you did not understand what we did here, it's okay. Just follow along. And by follow along, I mean just copy this, these lines of code. But essentially what this is doing is shoot a ray. Okay, so a ray, imagine this is our ray here. Okay, let's use that analogy again. Uh, so this is our, uh, our gun, okay? And this, this here is our target. Let's make this uh, green this time, okay? So this is our target here. Now, the ray starts off uh, inside the handle, okay? And it will shoot according to what speed we want it to move, okay? Actually, we don't dictate this, it just moves on its own, okay? So we're moving it in the direction of our target, okay? And it just keeps on moving infinitely until it reaches target or unless we specify a range. Okay, so array is basically this motion here. Oop. It hit something, therefore we have to do something about it. Okay, so it's array, you just shoot it, 
um, get wherever it is, or whatever it is, okay? Okay, so we did that. Now, local, we're gonna dictate the direction of the ray now. Ray direction equal to target location minus handle dot position. Okay, so you're just subtracting the, the positions of where the player clicked and the handle's position. Okay, and then you're gonna multiply that by the range. So this is how far you want the ray to travel before stopping. Okay, if you don't specify a range, I don't think you can do that. So just make this math.huge or something, or just a really, really large number if you just don't want that to stop. I just want it to stop at 525. Okay, um, so let's just do that. Um, so new ray dot filter descendant instances is equal to player dot character. So this is pretty much um, it's gonna ignore everything that's inside these um, curly brackets. So if the ray hits your character, okay. Um, actually, if the ray hits the, the person's who shot the gun's character, um, then it will not stop. It will just keep on going because it's ignoring the, the player's character. Okay, so local result is equal to workspace raycast. Okay, so this is what actually triggering the raycast for the ray to travel. Okay, um, so handle dot position. This is the origin of the raycast. Okay, we're just gonna input the direction that we calculated right here. Okay, and we're just gonna include the ray object itself. So new ray, okay, or the parameters revolving around the ray. Now, if result, then so if the result exists, so if we got a result back, then we can proceed. Okay, so if result or instance, then it actually hits something. Okay, so if this this is just checking if it actually hits something. Okay, so that's that. Um, so then we just need to check something minuscule. Okay, so if result.instance.parent find first child humanoid, then result.instance, I'll, exp I'll explain guys, instance.parent.humanoid is equal to humanoid, my bad. Humanoid.health is equal to. Actually, we don't want to do that. We just want to subtract the health, so minus damage. Okay, so let me just insert a few zombies. Uh, so that guy here, this there. Move these guys. So what we're doing is we're checking the parent. So let's say it hit this guy's right foot. Okay, um, we're just gonna check the parent. So if result of instance dot parent, which is this, okay. Find first child humanoid. So if a humanoid exists inside of the model or the parent that we hit, um, then it's going to subtract health from the humanoid. Okay, guys. So that's. I think that I should work. Let's test this out, Dave. Um, let's test this out. Okay. Okay. Now I think as soon as I join, these guys are going to just. Pull me around and try to kill me. Uh, yep. So, as you, as you guys can see, um, it works. You know, it has a maximum range. So let me let me try and shoot from the other side of the map here. Uh huh. Yep. So you can spam that. It works. It's fine. Um, if you guys wanted to make the gun slower, as I said, just go to the gun controller local script and increase this time to, let's say, one second. That's pretty slow, but let's let's show you guys what that looks like. Play. Okay. So just equip your gun and... I'm spamming my mouse hard right now and it's only shooting that fast. That's pretty bad. So you would use that for something like a semi-automatic rifle, for example, okay? Um, and if you wanted to make it uh, do more damage, then you'd go to the gun handler script inside of server script service, okay? And increase this damage variable here. So 
Let's change this to a hundred. Okay, so this should be insta kill, I think. Let's play. Uh, yep. And yeah, it's insta kill. Okay, so there you go. So that's how you make a gun on Roblox. Now, if you guys like the video, uh, please leave a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, I mean, subscribe. I mean, yeah, I, I don't really can i say guys i enjoy making these videos for you guys i'm trying to educate you on how you can make things uh, i would really appreciate if you guys could just like the video it'll help me grow because i want to reach more people thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time